Hello and uh, welcome to our brand new episode of uh, The Daily Debate. My name is Ahmed Nader and uh, tonight we'll be focusing on uh, the Egyptian Economic Conference, a roadmap to a more competitive economy in uh, the Egyptian uh, nation as we will be shedding more light on the challenges that took place in the past uh, seven or eight years under the tenure of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. One of them is the coronavirus pandemic which hit the whole world how it affected negatively the whole world and how Egypt dealt with it positively as we will be shedding more light as well on uh, the Russian Ukrainian conflict and uh, the measures taken by the Egyptian government under the leadership of His Excellency President Assisi to be going through it smoothly through uh, the social protection programs like a decent life for example we will be uh, heading uh, more closely to uh, the Egyptian Economic Conference, which will be taking place uh, over three days. It started on Sunday. It will be concluded on Tuesday with uh, the presence of uh, the President himself. The messages sent out uh, to the region, to the nation, to the globe uh, through the statements and the speech made by His Excellency President Assisi will be shedding more light on that as well throughout the course of the daily debate for tonight and I am honored to be having with me over the program for tonight is uh, Ms. Ali, Ali Mustafa, the researcher in the sustainable development. Thank you very much for being with Thank us tonight. Thank you so much for having me today. Anytime. We will be starting straight away with uh, the top story for tonight and it comes through the presidential activities of President Assisi as uh, President Assisi congratulated Meloni and invited her to participate in the COP27. President Abdel Fattah Hassisi congratulated Georgia Meloni for being the Italian Prime Minister, wishing her success in leading Italy towards a future that is consistent with the civilization and history of this ancient country. The President also expressed his aspiration to work with Meloni to enhance the Egyptian-Italian bilateral relations within the framework of the solid partnership that brings Egypt and Italy together in all fields. President Assisi invited Maloney to participate in the COP27 Global Climate Summit that will be held in Sharm el-Sheikh next November, saying, I am confident that the friendly Italian Republic is able to play a positive and constructive role during the upcoming COP27. We will be heading to the first report of uh, the daily debate for tonight, the Egyptian Economic Conference Egypt 2022, looking ahead to a roadmap for the challenges economically throughout Egypt and uh, the region as well. More details in the upcoming report. In the presence of President Abdel Fattah Sisi's Egyptian Economic Conference 2022 kicked off on Sunday at the new administrative capital. With senior government officials, high-profile economists, intellectual thinkers, specialists, businessmen, as well as representatives of more than 80 political parties and parliament members attending the three-day event. In his opening speech, Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli stated that Egypt is among the most affected countries by the global economic crisis and consequently establishing a roadmap for the economy requires recognizing the challenges we face. Madbouli added that the Egyptian Economic Conference 2022 that is centered around the theme a roadmap to a more competitive economy comes amid one of the worst global economic crises in 80 years. During the opening session of the Egyptian Economic Conference 2022, President Sisi stated that demarcating the maritime border in the Mediterranean and Red Seas were critical to exploiting the Zohar gas field, which kept Egypt from going dark due to the electrical shortages. As Sisi added that if it were not for Zohar gas field, Egypt would have been facing an existing shortages due to the high cost of gas import estimated at 10 billion monthly US dollar. 
Presently, Sisi further explained that if Egypt hadn't defined the maritime border with Greece and Cyprus in the Mediterranean Sea, no company would have agreed to explore for gas. President Sisi added that the project of Zor gas field was planned to start operating in 2021 if things were working with normal rates. Then Prime Minister Medbouli said adding that this means that Egypt would have been importing natural gas throughout the last period. It's worth mentioning that Egypt has made a series of oil and gas discoveries in recent years, most notably the giant Zor gas field of the Mediterranean in 2015, which holds an estimated reservoir of 30 trillion cubic feet of gas. Thanks to the gas field which started production in December 2017, Egypt has achieved self-sufficiency in natural gas since 2018. In his speech, Sisi noted that the Italian multinational gas company Eni stated in 2015 that El Zor would start production in five years, but the president told them it had to start production only in 18 months and they acted accordingly. Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the Daily Debate. As I said in the beginning, that tonight we'll be focusing uh, on uh, the Egyptian Economic Conference 2022, a roadmap uh, to the future of the Egyptian economy. As we did see in the past break, the messages, the main messages sent out by President Abdel Fattah Hassisi to the nation, to the region, and uh, to the world, uh, economically and uh, politically as well. And as I mentioned in the beginning, that I'm honored to be having with me in the studio tonight, Ms. Alia Ali Mustafa. 
the researcher in the sustainable development. Uh, Ms. Alia, the timing of uh, the Egyptian Economic Conference 2022 and uh, the location itself to be holding it at the new administrative capital, the new capital for Egypt as a symbol of uh, the achievements that we have had in the past eight or uh, seven years. How do you see the timing and the location of uh, the conference itself, um, especially that the challenges that we have seen in the past years, the uh, corona, the COVID-19, and then the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, how did they affect negatively the whole world and how did Egypt go through it smoothly? Okay. Uh, starting by talking about the Egyptian uh, International Conference, yes. uh, the, uh, stating the economy of, uh, of Egypt. Uh, starting talking about the time and the location of Ed, uh, I think it's perfect time and a perfect location for this. The perfect time because uh, Egypt uh, and the whole nations and the whole world are going through a, a very critical situation after the Ukrainian-Russian war and after the epidemic of uh, the corona, the COVID-19. Yes. Uh, the whole world have been suffering a lot and all these uh, affected negatively on the economy itself. Yes. And uh, by setting the time, uh, it came ahead before the, uh, the climate change conference that is going to be uh, starting the next month, at the thick of the next month, uh, exactly, if we can yes. say. Uh, and the, the location, uh, Egypt, uh, I see it's uh, mainly the core of the whole nations of the Arabian area and all the African area itself and the, the location for Egypt to be the host of these international conferences as I see this is a very wide leap and step for Egypt to have these conferences. Yes. Uh, but by talking about the, the conference uh, itself, we had, um, if we can look behind or a couple days before, the Prime Minister Dr. Madbouli had uh, set an orientation session uh, mm. to talk about the conference and to talk about uh, specifically the agenda of the conference. Uh, he started uh, by setting a very important question and a critical question that all the people and all uh, the, the sectors, uh, whatever is the governmental sector and the private sector and the companies, businessmen, economics, all the people are asking what is our economy future? Mm. What is uh, the next step that we are going to have? We have been through a lot of challenges, so what is the next step uh, that we are going to face uh, during the next few years? Yes. We have, as we all know, the Egypt vision for 2030. So are we going to achieve that in the next eight years or not? Mm. Uh, what is the future of our agriculture? What is the future of our, uh, the, of our market, stock market, the, the, the IT, the technology and everything? A lot of questions are popping up on our minds uh, of the whole nation itself. So uh, by answering all these uh, questions and gathering all the solutions and all the visions and visuals as, uh, at self in one uh, set, so he said that conference to gather all these opinions and to see the challenges. Also, I see the, the, uh, the, the conference itself or the idea of the conference to be held uh, recently in, the, in that time after exactly the conflict that happening uh, between Ukrainian and Russia uh, that I see that a, a perfect time that we have to uh, set for the people to make everything clear for all the people that we are having a series of challenges mm. and this is affects our economy that we have to face it together not only the government uh, can face uh, the these challenges itself we have all together face these challenges and we have to set everything clear um, he uh, also uh, emphasized on uh, that we have uh, to see how flexible and how resilient and our economy to face these uh, challenges that happened during uh, the uh, past few years. And the past few years, he exactly mentioned uh, uh, the 10 past years since 2011 until to, uh, 2022, uh, the recent year. So uh, the past 10 years, Egypt have been through five main crises 
five main challenges yes. uh, to revolutions and uh, reform of the uh, uh, economy and uh, uh, the epidemic uh, of uh, coronavirus and recently the Ukrainian-Russian <coughs> war. Mm. This is all affects our economy in a negative way. So we have to take a series of steps and a clear steps for all the nations to come up together and work together to achieve this vision. Mm -hmm. How do you see the importance of transparency between the political leadership, the government and the citizens, the people of Egypt? As you mentioned that uh, a lot of people, they have questions popping up um, during um, their time in the past 10 years, as you mentioned, uh, on their minds. What is the future of the Egyptian economy? How can we be dealing with such crises? How do you see the importance of transparency in terms of information that we have this problem, we need this measure, and we need your support. Yeah. By talking about this, uh, the Prime Minister, Dr. Mabouli, uh, uh, had a very uh, amazing uh, clarification for this. He mentioned that we are having in this conference uh, almost uh, 500 participants for all the uh, sectors, whether they are private sectors, uh, companies, CEOs, uh, businessmen, all the sectors and expert thinkers uh, that are uh, uh, having an interest for the economy and representatives of uh, mm -hmm. uh, several international initiatives and international uh, institutions as well. Yes. Not only he said uh, the 500 or the almost uh, four uh, to 500 people or the participants, but also he said a website that is all clear for all the people to participate, not only a website, he also uh, created an application for all the youth, mm -hmm. for all the Egyptians to look in the website, look <coughs> in the application through their mobile phones, and they can start to participate and uh, sharing their opinions and to see the visions and to, to share, to, to have a cooperation between the people and the government. We are not working together, mm -hmm. so people have to work all together to to have a, a, a cooperation to achieve the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, how did he see the importance of uh, participation of His Excellency President Assisi in such an important uh, conference and the main messages sent uh, in the field of uh, the economy? Yeah, uh, I see that uh, uh, the President uh, El Sisi, by his presence uh, in this conference, is really really amazing and. Uh, uh, he give a, a very big value for the how serious this is a challenge that we are been through, and uh, we have to focus and gather all the people together to focus on uh, the the solutions of this. Mm. Uh, his presidency uh, to attend such a conference uh, to shed the light on all the challenges and all the uh, problems that we are facing. <coughs> Not only the problems, we are providing solutions for each one. Mm. And I see this is amazing a step that we are having mm. together. Yes. Uh, as I asked before the importance of having this conference at the new administrative capital after the conference or even during the morning of the conference President Abdel Fattah Hassisi he checked over the new administrative capital from the plane as we did see through the statements of uh, the presidential spokesman Basir Muradi. Um, the achievement of having a new capital in the space of uh, five to six years how do you see this do you think that is important for the future of the country. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm. This is a, a very good leap uh, in our um, uh, national security. Yes. Okay. And this is a very, very essential that we are having uh, administrative capital and a main capital. This is uh, really important um, considering our national security, considering that we are having a, a, a different uh, type of, uh, of state and a different type of buildings. If we um, can anyone uh, see on TV or whatever uh, that uh, the, the buildings itself are different in the administrative buildings uh, in the administrative uh, capital, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, 
everything is different. Everything that uh, lead that Egypt is going forward a very big development. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, you've mentioned that it is important that uh, President Assisi sent out messages to the nation that there is transparency between the political leadership and the people of Egypt. What, what does this say uh, to the outside world, to the regional um, powers, to the global powers as well, in the Mediterranean, in the Middle East, in Africa, in the world? Yeah. Uh, as I said just a moment before that Egypt is the core of all these, at the center of the world, as, uh, 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 as I see. Yes. So as Egypt as a center of the world have to send a clear and a, a, a very uh, simple messages to all the world. We are hosting a very uh, important two international conferences in two couple months that's mm. following up together. Mm. And uh, the President Abdel Fattah al Sisi supporting both conferences the, uh, uh, and the timing of the conference that uh, the economic conference that comes before the climate change conference. Mm. I see this is essential because this is essential uh, th that we are having a very big challenges uh, related to the economy uh, related to uh, uh, not only in Egypt uh, we are having a very big challenges uh, over the Arabian area the African area and uh, we are facing these challenges uh, through many years as we talked before about uh, these challenges and five main prices Egypt had standed facing these crises during the past few years and we are going forward uh, mm -hmm. inshallah. Yes. yes, one of the statements made uh, by President Assisi was about the uh, Lohr gas field and the importance of uh, demarcating the borders between uh, Egypt, uh, Greece, Cyprus, over the Mediterranean and uh, this affected positively the Egyptian economy not just for the electricity purposes. Uh, how do you see the leap that we have had in this field economically. Okay, by talking about this, we can set numbers. Mm. So numbers speak louder. Uh, by discovering this field, this gas field, uh, has saved uh, about $60 million monthly uh, exports, uh, mm. sorry, monthly imports of the gas from uh, Egypt uh, had this saved us from a very uh, uh, big crisis that we are having uh, in the past few years. Mm. And we have been fell into debts because of this. But by discovering this field, uh, this gas field, Zohar, exactly, this saved us a lot and uh, by talking about numbers uh, 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 itself we have uh, about 250 million dollars uh, per month that we are having to raise our economy and by sitting the borders as you said before uh, that helps us most of the oil companies to uh, did the drilling things and did the work in a safe and clear places Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, the electrical shortages, the blackouts that we have had um, in 2011, before 2011, and up till 2013 and 2014, until the tenure of uh, President Assisi, how do you think the achievement that we have had in terms of cutting all those blackouts and the electricity shortages that we have had in 2011, as you mentioned, 10 years or 11 years ago, mm -hmm. and the status that we have now that we are exporting electricity that we are exporting gas and energy yeah exactly mm. so this is a very big leap as we said and our economy that we are exporting this not only importing in the uh, this different uh, uh, in economy and different and uh, the uh, the outcomes of the gas field that have been discovered recently yes and uh, by talking about the electricity uh, itself people can feel this mm. in the past few years can feel this, feel a very big difference between the electricity in the past few years and the electricity uh, uh, since 2016 and on. It was uh, completely different. And uh, by discovering a uh, Zohr uh, gas field in 2019, it was a very big leap in our economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, the slums 
that we have had all over Egypt, one of them, um, during the times of uh, 2011, 2013, the slums of uh, Maspiro, for example, the slums that we have had all over Cairo and Alexandria, this file in specific to be replacing uh, the slums and the unorganized neighborhoods with uh, Al Asmarat, for example, and uh, that we have seen in the past seven or eight years uh, furnished apartments, fully furnished apartments uh, with no rent whatsoever, with no money paid by the citizen whatsoever. How do you see this step? Because we don't see this at any part of the world. Yeah, mm. exactly. So as we said, this is a part of the economy uh, thing or the economy uh, development uh, that we are going, uh, that we were talking about. Yes. The economic development uh, uh, is not a development unless the people can feel it. Mm. So as if people can feel it, so that means that we are going to a very clear and, uh, uh, and uh, wide steps and magnificent mm. steps uh, in our economy. Mm. Uh, by talking about this, we have uh, decent life uh, initiatives and we have the solidarity and uh, dignity uh, initiatives as yes. well. Mm. And uh, by talking about this day exactly, meets the day of the first uh, uh, creating the initiative of decent life. Mm. This is the first uh, day. So uh, through this platform, I have, um, I must thank all the people and uh, starting by President El Sisi, by uh, supporting all the youth mm. by uh, in the past three years uh, through a very big success and effort and har hard work mm. and uh, those youth her, have been showing their, their love to their country and um, uh, I, uh, through this platform I have to thank all of them mm. and thank the President for his support for these youth to, um, to, to help the people. Uh, Decent Life have reached every single uh, village in the countryside mm. by giving them water, by giving them um, the, uh, the logistics and giving them food and whatever. So uh, have been uh, uh, through a very big and clear ethics uh, that we all uh, we all see and all the people can see recently. Mm -hmm. uh, you've mentioned uh, the presidential initiatives, uh, a decent life and uh, solidarity uh, and dignity. You said that they have reached millions of people, millions of citizens through the villages of Egypt, providing uh, food, security, water, and all of these things. Mm -hmm. But what about the technology as well? Because you're a researcher in sustainable development, the sustainability because we are trying to be getting technology into the villages as well, the internet to be reaching every citizen of uh, Egypt. Uh, is this important for the Egyptians? Because he said it is important, more important to be feeling mm -hmm. the progress, not just pen on paper. Exactly. Mm. So um, we cannot neglect the importance of the technology nowadays. Uh, and uh, by reaching the, the field of technology, uh, and rela its relation with the Decent, Decent Life initiative uh, by supporting that. Decent Life has supported the technology a lot in the past few years. Mm. Uh, and we can link this with the education sector. The education sector uh, has developed in the past few years and we can see technology that uh, uh, have been involved in our schools a lot. Um, all these uh, students and the countryside must reach the technology, must have the internet, have the, uh, must have the access to the world. Uh, and that's helped them a lot in their education level and also in their life level and uh, to have a dignity and decent life. Mm. And the economic reform measures that we have seen being implemented all over Egypt in the past uh, few years, uh, of course it is a courageous, brave decision by the political leadership, but how do you see the importance of the acceptance of the Egyptian citizen of this program, the economic reform program, for the uh, benefit of the citizen, for the benefit of the country and the future generations as well? Yes. Mm. Uh, 
by talking about the conference, uh, as I said before, um, this opened to the whole nation. Mm. Uh, he said the uh, mobile application, that's for the people, in order to get the people and the youth exactly involved into the, the challenges that we are facing. Uh, as I said also before, we are not facing these challenges together. Mm. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, we are not facing this alone. We have to face all this all together. Yes. The government is not working alone. Mm. We have to collaborate all together to, uh, to, uh, to reach the vision of, uh, of Egypt 2030. And as we know that we have almost eight years to mm. reach this vision, so this conference is to know how flexible we are. Uh, are we going into the right path to achieve that or not? Mm. And the answer of this question and most of the uh, questions for all the people are going to be answered during the next two days of, um, mm. of the uh, conference that is going to conclude at the 25th of mm. this month. Uh, how do you see the interactive relationship between the youth of Egypt and the political leadership and more specifically President Assisi? Because we have seen um, many platforms, uh, the World Youth Forum, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the African Youth Forum in Aswan, uh, um, several initiatives targeting uh, the young men and the young women of Egypt. On the other hand, there is appreciation by uh, those young men and those young women for the um, efforts of the political leadership, for the efforts of uh, the uh, government and the care itself of the government of the youth. Uh, how do you see this relationship in the past few years? Okay, by talking about this, uh, this mm. reached me uh, uh, specifically and personally. Yes. Uh, because uh, in the uh, past years, uh, in, in the history, we did not see the youth participating in the political life, mm. participating in any mm. kind of, uh, of whatever we can say, uh, participations mm. of uh, the p political, economical, mm. uh, whatever happens. And do you see a change in this file? A very big change. Mm. Uh, and not only me seeing this, all the youth, all the people can see this. And we cannot deny that we are having a lot of initiatives, most of it are uh, the idea of the youth. That means that the government are listening to us, mm. are, listening, are listening to the, the, to the youth and are having their uh, ideas into the right uh, and correct path. Mm. And uh, uh, for example, the, the Decent Life Initiative is one of the ideas of the youth. Yes. The uh, solidarity and dignity is one of the ideas of the youth. That means that the government is listening to us for the first time in many years before. Not only listening to us, they are giving us a change, uh, chances, uh, very clear chances uh, for us to participate in uh, the political life mm. and in the parties as well. And, uh, the, in the economy, in the IT and technology sectors, mm -hmm. in the media sector, all the sectors we can see the youth in the past few years, or we cannot uh, see, a f we cannot say a few years in the most past uh, many years, mm -hmm. we did not see this ever. Mm -hmm. We can see a very big change. We can see uh, ministers who are uh, from the youth. We can see uh, governors uh, are from the youth and mm. so on. This is a very big change. Mm. One of uh, the statements made by President Abdel Fattah Hassisi is what is being discussed over the three days of Egypt's economic conference will be implemented as uh, a reform path for the people, for the nation in the future. What is the importance of uh, what you see is what you get? What is being discussed will be implemented. This means uh, transparency and communication between both sides. Yeah, by talking about this, uh, uh, we can go back to the orientation session that uh, uh, the Prime Minister, M Mr. Madouli, had uh, done yes. a, few, uh, a few days ago. Mm. He mentioned that we have to set and to see the visuals and the visions. Mm -hmm. This is the relation. If we can see or understand exactly the relation between the visuals and the visions, uh, we can understand and answer these questions. Mm -hmm. The visuals are the, the states or the thing that we can feel 
uh, and the real uh, life that we're having, all the challenges, all the problems, all the situation, all the achievements as well, mm. and the vision. Mm. What is our vision for the next years? Uh, relaying on these visuals. Mm. In these visuals, we are having uh, challenges. How are we going to have a vision to solve this, to serve this? Mm -hmm. And this, uh, I think this is a very uh, a good idea to have a combination between mm. both ideas. One of uh, the main pillars and uh, one of the bigger ideas that will be discussed over the three days of Egypt's economic conference and the COP27 would be uh, the sustainable development for the future of Egypt. How much of it do you think we have implemented here in the country in the past five to eight years? Okay, uh, by talking about the sustainable development, uh, we are having uh, some goals, uh, exactly the R17 goals, but uh, we are focusing on, uh, through this conference, on uh, some goals, starting from goal number eight, uh, is talking about the uh, decent uh, work and economic growth and going forward to the uh, 12 uh, goal is talking uh, about the uh, responsible uh, compass and uh, uh, production and also we are having uh, also in uh, the 10th goal mm. uh, is talking about the uh, the equality and reduce inequality sorry uh, the ninth goal is talking about the industry innovation and infrastructure mm. all these sectors are covered during the conference Mm. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the questions uh, that were upgraded from the National Dialogue Subcommittee's President Assisi asked mm -hmm. to be having uh, about eight questions to be upgraded from the subcommittees of uh, the National, Dialo National Dialogue, more specifically in the field of uh, economy, uh, to the uh, Egyptian Economic Conference and maybe the COP27. Uh, this is a very important point because you mentioned that we have questions all over our minds all the time, especially for uh, the future of the economy of Egypt that will be affecting my future and the future generations as well. Uh, how do you see the importance of this link between the president and the people? Yes. Mm. Um, by talking about the link between the president and the people, we can see this from the very beginning, uh, exactly uh, from the year 2016. Yes. When the president and Sisi uh, came up to the people and show up to the people and tell them uh, we have to work together. The government is not alone. Hmm. We have to gather all together and the importance and the value of work. Uh, for the first time, we can see a president is uh, talking to us. Uh, he, uh, we can see the, the initiative, ask the president. This is the first time to happen yes. that we can ask the president any question that pops up to our mind. Mm. Uh, he listens to us, to the us, I'm talking about the, the us uh, exactly. He listens to, to the people, what do you have in your mind? Mm. And this conference, the economic, uh, the Egyptian economic conference, is exactly shedding the light on the people. Mm. The main purpose, uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Mabouli, talked about this, we have to listen to the people. Mm. We have to listen to the experts. What do you have in your mind? Mm. What are the challenges that we are having? And what are the challenges that you as people, the public people, the Egyptians, are having uh, through your daily lives? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the economy affected their daily lives. So what are the challenges that you are having in your daily life in order for us as a government to solve it, to set mm -hmm. solutions for it? And I see this is a very excellent way to communicate between this and a very uh, good communication uh, as well we can see uh, among the ministries itself. Mm. For the first time, the ministers are not working alone or individually. They are working all together because they are having one vision. Mm -hmm. well, we have spoken about uh, the role of the political leadership, the government and the citizens as well. What is the role of the private sector in all of this, in your opinion? Yeah. By talking about the private sector, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Madbouli, have mentioned the private sector is 
specifically several times mm. and he wants to uh, enhance and in, in empower the participation of the private sector and the uh, in the investments uh, of the economy mm. uh, to be uprising to 60 percent or 65 percent in the next uh, a few years uh, that's uh, uh, I see it's a very good step for our economy mm. also he mentioned that we have to um, uh, to uh, to uh, make things easy for the uh, through private sectors uh, to uh, to have investments and to have projects uh, on the long uh, long term projects and the mid term uh, projects as mm -hmm. well. In terms of investments, what is the importance of having a roadmap for the Egyptian economy in terms of uh, the point of view of the investor coming from a different country that he wants to be pumping money into the Egyptian economy. What is the importance of a roadmap for the Egyptian economy for the future? Okay, the roadmap uh, recently, uh, by talking about the Egyptian uh, economic conference uh, specifically, uh, the main purpose, as we said, is to put a roadmap for our economy. Where are we going? Mm. What are the next steps? and how um, competitive uh, our market uh, or our economy is. Mm. What makes the investment, the international uh, institutions that come uh, to our country, to come to our state and put money, as you said, in our state and to build uh, very huge projects in our uh, state. Mm. And uh, I see that uh, during that uh, past few years, as Egypt stood uh, uh, very strong uh, against these most of the challenges, uh, the world, all the world can see that Egypt has faced all these uh, challenges uh, bravely, strongly. Mm -hmm. uh, by talking about the uh, COVID-19, during the COVID-19, we have the average of the development. Mm -hmm. The average of the development uh, is from uh, five to eight and the average of the development of Egypt has raised uh, two points or two percentage during that time, which means that Egypt during the challenges is going forward to a very nice progress that makes all the investments can come into our country and pop mm. money into our country. Speaking of uh, from five to eight and the numbers, my last question uh, would be about the link between the Egyptian vision 2030 and the conference that we are having in 2022. What is the link between those two? Yeah, we're having a very uh, clear link. As I said before, uh, we have uh, the sustainable development. Uh, we are having the 17 goals. The from the eight goal, uh, actually the 17 goal are serving uh, that, but actually the, from the eighth goal to the 12th goal are serving this conference. Mm. Uh, the, the economic growth and the industry, the infrastructure for all the sectors that, uh, that we are emphasizing on. Mm -hmm. And we have to shed the light on the private sector, as uh, Prime Minister Dr. Madbouli said, that we have to put our uh, all uh, uh, our forces and all our uh, 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 investments to help the private sector to raise up to the 60 percent in the next few years. Yes, Ms. Ali, Ali Mustafa, the researcher in sustainable development. Thank you very much for being with us tonight on the Daily Debate. Thank you so much. Anytime. Okay. And this brings us to the end of uh, the daily debate for tonight thank you for watching and goodbye <laughs> وآليات تعزيزه وفق أفضل الممارسات الدولية المؤتمر الاقتصادي في الفترة من 23 إلى 25 أكتوبر فندق الماسة العاصمة الإدارية الجديدة خارطة الطريق لاقتصاد أكثر تنافسية